So we were talking about St. Martin. I'm going full time race here. I swear to God, Okay. So, bitch about the time was putting heretics to death. St. Martin thought we don't need to go that, that extreme. We can just use this punishment. They must. Yeah. Right. Listen to trap bunny bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Excommunication. What does that mean? What did you What? What's mean? This is kind of the worst penalty the church can give. What is the most important part of our faith? Back. This should have been what you missed the most over the pandemic. Church. Church. Oh. Receiving the Eucharist. I swear to God. Okay. Celebrating the sacraments. That was a two week fun. You're like pulling it back. You both need to get it in today? No. It's your warning. My car is straight over on it. You're 13. I'm still. Have a restraining order. Some of you need to be in restraints. Period. You could just go around with one of those. Uh, no, one of those uh, silent suits. Yeah. <laughs> Excommunication means you can't receive the sacraments. Wait, is this social study here? Yeah. I just wanted to finish this last point. Yeah. Yeah. Excommunication means you can't receive the sacraments. The only one you could receive is what? Death. I don't know what exactly. Uh, the blessing. There is one you could. Which one could you? Repentance. Marriage. Reconciliation. Reconciliation. Or you repent of what? Your sins. You repent of the things you're teaching that I go along with the church. Which I can't receive. Okay. When Martin asked the emperor to spare the life of a man accused of heresy, Ithacius accused Martin of the same heresy. Although Martin's life was spared, the other man was executed. Martin was tried to, then tried to cooperate with Ithacius on a matter on different matters, but was always deeply troubled by his decision. When you're in a similar situation, we need to remember hindsight is always 20-20. If we look back and conclude we made the wrong decision, we also need to remember that at the time we were deciding we did it with the best we could with the information that we had. Who's with me? When you wake up in the morning, your first thoughts are about the day ahead. You think of the things you need to do, and you wonder if you're up to it. Next time, instead of measuring your day against what you think you can do, measure it against what you know I can do, which is anything. There is no such thing as a day too tough for me. Not a test day, not a moving day, not a my parents had a terrible fight day. I already know everything you'll face today, and I'll help you face it. I don't give you the same amount of strength every day. When you need more, when you trust me more, then I give you more. Look to me for all that you need. I promise I won't let you down. Okay, let's turn to page 95 in your social studies book.
Let's answer one of the questions. On what? On page 95. On page 95. So there's dictatorships. What else? Each of them, every government has its what? Pluses and minuses. This is a very stable government, but what's missing? Um, freedom. Freedom, okay? This has lots of freedom, but sometimes can be what? They can unstable. make a decision. Can be unstable sometimes, okay? Monarchy just means what? There's, uh, queens and queens, and There's like uh, king, or queen, king or queen rules. So it could be, could be democratic, or it could be the southern. Okay, now RM, you said you want to do which one? Three A. What if you include all the companies that are outside your country? What's it called then? Tommy. It's gross national product. Okay, it's gross national product if you include all the companies that your country has. If it's just in your country, it's domestic product. If it's all your companies, it's gross national product. So which one's going to be a higher number? Come on, which one's going to be a higher number? The national. Gross. National because it's including a lot more companies. Yeah. Well, we did 3B. Let's talk real quick about economies. So these are governments. Have we got these? Yeah. Have we got definitions of them? Yeah. No. So when we go through the world, this is what we're going to identify. What kind of government do they have there? Okay. And a lot of this is kind of just stuff we want to talk about. So economy, what's the definition of economy? Uh, how your, uh, like how your country is run. How your country is run. How money is yeah. So it includes your money. Basically, it's the goods and services that provide for a country's needs. And there are two major types of economies. What are the two major ones? Socialist. Tally. Free market. Free market. Well, 
the other one? Command. Command. Okay. These are the two major types of economy. What's another name for free market? Capitalism. Capitalism. One other name too. Free enterprise. Now, the difference is how they get their goods and services. So what drives this? The people. The money. Making money. What's the term for that? The people. Uh, Making money. Making money. Making money. What's the term? Profit. Profit. So this is what? Profit drives this. And how do you get the profit through what? We sell our goods or products. Okay. So competition really is a driving force here of a free enterprise. So a business, if I can, if I can compete better than another business, what? Then you'll get more money. I'll get more money. I'll make more profit. What else? What else kind of runs this? Remember the law of physics. Charles Darwin. The law of supply, the law of supply and, demand. and demand. Who remembers how that works? How when the supply goes up, the demand goes down. High demand goes up, the supply goes down. Okay, so if you have a high supply, it's a lower cost. You have a high supply that creates low demand. Which creates what? Low prices. Low prices. Then the opposite is true. If I have a low supply, creates high demand. High demand, which creates high prices. So right now, I just bought gas on Monday for a dollar sixty-one. What? That's pretty. Gas prices are through the roof. Dollar. You buy gas once a week. Dollar sixty one in Nebraska, it costs two dollars and nine cents. Jeez. Per gallon? Yeah, it's two dollars per gallon. And so it's like thirty dollars. I don't know what Rosemount gas station is here. Okay. Like okay. okay, what determine that price? Um the supply, supply and demand. demand. Supply and demand determine it. So obviously the gas station I got theirs was their supply they were able to get it for a lower cost to them. But also, the fact that because of the pandemic, a lot fewer people are what? Driving. Driving. So gasoline prices have gone down overall, everywhere. Okay, again, it has to do with supply. Okay. They got plenty of oil, but little demand because people aren't driving. So that causes the prices to go down. Over here now, okay? What drives this? So the government drives this. Okay. So it's not about competition. It's about what? Socialism. So it's kind of government control. Is that bad? Yeah. No. It's good. Very good. So nowhere in the world is there just one or the other. Every country has a mixture. So really we have what are called mixed economies. Like, we say our economy is which one? We say it's free market, but it has government control. What's the example of that? Hospitals. No, that's not true. Gasoline. Taxes. Fossil fuels. So, like, in when I get my paycheck, mm -hmm. oh. taxes. They can't go okay. third of it. They're going to take some money for taxes. They're going to take some money for Social Security. I'm not going to get what I actually made because government's taking some of that. So that means government's controlling that, right? We've seen lots of government control now because of the pandemic, and the governor just made up a bunch of new rules. Okay. 
Businesses have been forced to close. Why? The government said it. Okay? More math. That's not this then, right? That's this. So you can see how it's a mixture. Normally, this type of economy is associated with which type of government? Democratic government. Usually, this type of economy is associated with okay, a dictatorship, authoritarian, communism. Okay, but again, even in communist countries like China, they have a lot of what? Free market. They have a lot of free market too. Just like it is. We have mainly free market, but we have government control. So there is a mixture. But usually you identify them by the majority of what their economy is. Now the other issue that we have to deal with, that country, it's easier for these kind of countries to deal with it than it is for this one, is the balance between your economy and your environment. So that was one of the campaign issues, right? Mm -hmm. What was the campaign issue? What's the big concern? What's the big hot topic out there now? Uh, coronavirus. Besides the coronavirus. Uh, the economy. Right. That has to do with the environment. Oh. Global, global, global warming. warming. Okay, global warming, climate change. Okay, that's a big hot topic out there, right? Everyone believes that those systems are collapsing. Obviously. It's always going to happen. Why? Because we have heaters. 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 Because we have Otherwise, our economy couldn't what? Be an economy. It couldn't function. Okay? Total collapse. It couldn't function without, without doing that. So let's look at a model. The ice caps are gone. Goodbye, polar bears. So, this is a picture of the world. It's the world, okay? It's the world. It's the world. So, this is your whole environment, okay? This part is your economy. So the economy needs what? Natural resources. It needs, it needs resources coming into it. And energy. So it's gonna, these resources help in producing things, producing the goods and services that we need, okay? But they also produce what? Waste. Some of these waste, okay? get recycled back and used again. Some people say we should have 100% recycling. That's not good. Yes. That's that is not good. good. Why? Because you could poop on your steak and then someone else is going to have to eat it. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> because recycling actually causes what? Okay. Recycling uses resources. Recycling causes this. So again, you're trying to find the balance of what's the most efficient use of the recycling that you're not creating more problems than others. So this is the, the pattern again. So you got production comes in your goods and services. This is consumption. That means what? Eating it, using it. Yeah, that's us. We're called the what? Consumers. Consumers. Consumer are the people that Consumer use cellular. the products that are made. Give me some examples of products you're using today. Food. Clothes. Toothpaste. Clothes. Use toothpaste this morning. Okay. What clothes? You're wearing clothes. Bones. <laughs> we are in this classroom that has lights. This school has heat. Okay. We have running water. A lot of the resources we just what? We take for granted. So you don't have them. People down in Florida right now, they're all struggling. Why? They're okay. underwater. Because they're underwater. Yeah. 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 
24 hours. So, the consumers, even when you consume, you're producing waste, which either comes back to recycling or, again, goes right out into your environment. What's this part coming in? Why is that coming in? That's sun. Because my nature breaks water. Because we enjoy the environment. We also consume the environment in just terms of aesthetics. How many like to go camping? I've never been. Really? This only this many people like to go camping? Well, and Ari, we've never been camping? I'm just sleeping in my backyard. Oh, yeah. I came with a fire shotgun. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Tommy likes camping in corners. Natural resources are also used to create the environmental quality. So the job of a country or the job of the country's economy is to try to do what? <laughs> to keep the right amount of balance here. Because when it gets out of balance, okay, you can get out of balance either way. If you have so much concern for the environment, what's going to suffer? Your environment. Your economy is going to suffer. Which means if the economy is suffering, what? Then your environment is People are going to be suffering. I will make you suffer. This is a big, big uh, thing about the pandemic and about the rules of the pandemic. So the states that have more restrictions on the economy, what's happened? That economy is really struggling. The states that have had less restrictions, what? Their economies are doing better. But the cost then is what? People getting sick. Okay, people getting sick. So again, even with, we could use this pattern for the pandemic also. But it's kind of the same thing. So that's why there are thousands, really, thousands of jobs within these two areas. And people trying to get the balance. Politicians' job, they're supposed to what? Take care and argue. They're supposed to yeah. figure out this balance. She's the oldest person. But again, everybody has what? Opinions. Different opinions. Some people say we need to be less concerned about the environment, more concerned about the economy. Nah. And other people say we need to be more concerned about the environment, less concerned about the economy. But usually it's the people that when it starts affecting you, that's when what? It matters. That's when it matters. But each country that we're going to be studying this year, they have the same problems we do. How do you keep this balance? Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to look at, oh, before I show you that video. We told you population density. I forgot to te teach you one other equation here, Matt. So how do you figure population density? Um, uh, like birth rate area birth rate. By Take the what? The birth rate. What's your equation? You need to know this equation. So if you didn't write it down, you need to write it down. People. People over Take the unit people of land. and you divide it by what? Unit, unit of land. land. By the length, okay? Now there's another type. That's called... That's called arithmetic density or population density. There's another term called agricultural density. What do you think that is? Same equation, but slightly different. Uh, that's the amount of farmland. So food. this is people divided by land that can be farmed. What's the term for land that can be farmed? Farmland. Agricultural you need to know this term. Okay. Arable land. Why couldn't why couldn't land be arable? If it was in a desert. This one Deserts. Oh. Uh, cold land. Okay, permafrost areas. Yeah. Um, rocky area. Okay, like rocky mountainous areas. Okay. <coughs> so. Which number will be higher? Depends on the place. This number will be higher because you're going to have less land. So the way you plug it in is you take the people divided by the arable land. So let's say, what was the equation I told you the other day? The thousand people? Yeah, yeah over a hundred. Um, 
over 100. Find, like, the population and we water. said, we said that's what? 10. 10 what? 10 people per square mile. What if we said 50% of this land can be farmed? Then it'd be not so then you have to do what? Double it. Divided by 2. So we got to take our 100 and divide it by 2. two. So now it's what? 50. So now we're taking 1,000 divided by 50. 50. What do you get? Or just multiply it by 2. Uh, 200? No. 20 people per square mile. Okay, so you're getting 20 people per square mile. Does everybody see that? Yeah. So you got to figure the land first, the arable land, and then you just plug it into the equation. Make sense? Yeah, wait, what does arable land mean again? Uh, land that land can be farmed. you can farm. farm. So that's going to be some of the uh, questions on the review and the test. And of course, you need to label it correctly. Always it's what? Per square mile. People per square mile. Now, we got a couple of videos here, short videos, where they have taken the world, which we said is almost 8 billion people now. If you took the whole world and you shrunk it down to 100 people, what would it look like? This kind of gives you a better picture when we're looking, looking at the world, okay? So we got a couple videos that have done that. So they've taken the world and shrunk it down to 100 people. What, what would that 100 people village look like? And that's what this video is. Well, is it, is it just like three population? Nine, nine, nine girls, one boy. So um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I saw this thing about that, and it said there would have to be like 94 men and 94 women for that to be successful. Like the guy Somebody hit the AVU button. The title of Adam and Eve. And you would have to go on like frequent runs. Why did you just look that up? No, no, I, I saw. Have you seen on Snapchat the what ifs? I've only had Snapchat for like a week. Yeah. I've had it for like a year, but I didn't use it. Like, Tommy, how am I going to buy it? I don't have any money. Good. Good job. 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 Good one eight. One eight. Wait. Wait, hold up. This is not a hundred people, though. Do it like twice. Oh, never mind. Jeez, bro. One eight. One eight. Alright. No.
And these figures would be slightly off white. This episode of Real Life Lore is made possible by Hover. Get your unique domain and email by going to hover.com slash real life lore and using the code real life lore for 10% off at checkout. Earth is a complicated place. There are a lot of us that share this planet together, and it's sometimes difficult to understand who everybody is and what everybody believes. To understand things a little better, let's shrink the entire world population down from 7.5 billion people all the way down to just 100 people, and keep our small 100-person society as similar to the real world as possible. Dividing between gender, the 100-person world would be equally divided between 50 men and 50 women. Most of these people would live in Asia, a total of 59 people, compared to 16 people living in Africa, 10 living in Europe, 8 in North oh, America, so only 6 in South America, and just one lonely person <laughs> living in Australia and Oceania. 19 of these people would be Chinese citizens, and another 18 would be Indians. There would be only 4 Americans, 3 Brazilians, 2 Russians, and 1 German. The other 53 people would be citizens of 187 other countries around the world. Most of these people would be pretty young, with 9 people aged just between 0 and 4 years old. 17 people would be aged between 5 and 14 years old, and 16 people would be aged between 15 and 24 years old. Another 16 people would be aged between 25 and 34, which means that 58 total people are younger than 35 years old. 20 people would be between 35 and 49, just 14 people would be aged 50 to 64, and only 8 people would be above the age of 65. When we talk about religion in the group of 100, 31 people would adhere to Christianity, 23 would be Muslims, 15 would be Hindus, 7 would be Buddhists, 9 would follow other religions, and 15 people would be non-religious or atheists. Mandarin Chinese is the most understood language with 14 people understanding it, but English isn't far behind it with 13 people understanding it. 9 people understand Hindustani, 8 people understand Spanish, and 5 people understand Arabic, with the other 51 people speaking over 7,000 other languages. Mostly everybody can read and write, with 86 people possessing this ability, but there are still 14 people who are illiterate. 92 people have access to clean and safe drinking water, but 8 people do not and struggle as a result. 62 people are healthy in their weight, but 11 people are malnourished and one person is literally starving. The, the other really? 26 people are overweight, <laughs> and 8 of those people are actually obese. 21 people do not have adequate housing to fully protect themselves from the elements, and one person is homeless. The other 78 people, however, do have proper housing for themselves. Only 60 people have access to toilets, though, and the other 40 people do not. Of those 40 people, 15 of them still defecate out in the open outdoors. 54 people live in cities, while the other 46 people live out in the countryside. Nine people are currently unemployed, while the other 91 people either are employed or are outside of the labor force. One of these people has AIDS, and five people will be infected by some form of STD this year alone. 58 people are currently married, and the average age that people get married at is 29 for women and 32 for men. Another 15 people actively smoke tobacco products, while the other 85 people do not. Interestingly enough, the same statistic is true of vehicle ownership, with 15 people owning a motor vehicle and another 85 people not owning one. Most people are overwhelmingly right-handed, with only 10 people being left-handed. 73 people have or are expected to graduate from high school, while the other 27 people haven't or are not expected to graduate. However, only 7 people hold a college degree of any kind, while the other 93 people do not. But that doesn't stop most people from owning a cell phone. 80 people are in possession of one, while the other 20 people do not have one. This means that yes, 
access, or people have access to a cell phone in the world than a toilet. Internet access is also much more uncommon than cell phone ownership, with only 42 people having access to it and the other 58 people not having any access to it. Speaking of the people with internet access, however, 26 of them have a Facebook profile, 17 of them have a YouTube account, and 4 of them use Twitter at least once per month. But perhaps the most shocking difference in our small group of 100 people is the distribution of wealth between them. 71 people have a net worth of under $10,000, and out of them, 12 people are living on less than $2 per day. 21 people have a net worth between $10,000 and $100,000, and 7 people have a net worth between $100,000 and $1 million. There is only one person who actually has a net worth above $1 million, but this one yes, person really is vastly more wealthy than even this chart makes it appear. This one person owns 50% of all the money in the world. The next nine people own 35% of all the money in the world, so to recap, 10 people together control 85% of all the money in the society. Another 20 people owns 12% of the global money supply, which means that 70 people, the vast majority of the society, only controls a mere 3% of the money supply. In addition, one person is a refugee or currently displaced from their home, and two people are named Muhammad, which is the most common name in the world currently. Finally, all 100 people Why is that all like Tommy? Tommy. 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 However, who knows how all of this data Tommy. may be different. So this video was made possible by Hover. Like oh, 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 uh, the, uh, Muhammad. Muhammad. There's two Muhammads. <laughs> Only 40% of the people in the world have toilets. And more people have Why do 60 people have phones? Have phones no, it's like 80% people have phones, 60% don't have Wi-Fi. No, yeah. well, that, that okay, raise your hands. You need a toilet. You need to go anywhere. You, need, you? you want a turtle's mouth? <laughs> okay, what else? Uh, that they have like 80% of phones and only 60% of internet. You said toilet. I, like I said phones and internet. Oh, okay. You said well, toilet phones. Toilet phones. Twelve people have severe wounds. Twelve people have severe wounds. That wasn't my answer. And we know where we stand probably on that chart. The top eight percent. Okay. Probably the nine percent. Do we do have the nine or yes? I don't think it was the only thing. I don't think it how can they use this to show population? There's more people it's, on the... So it's just a picture at night, but showing what? Lights. Okay, lights. Uh, and the left side is insanely black. So when you see like huge you. areas of white, it tells you what? They have a lot of people. Okay, it's high population area. And where you have no, no light, very little, or any population. So they have these of the, the world, too. Okay? Yeah. This article says the uh, Population what? Research Institute is fighting the overpopulation myth. What is the overpopulation myth? Abortion. What? <laughs> no, that will have more people and not enough okay. resources. The overpopulation myth, again, is the fact that the world is overpopulated. Again, if you look, looked at population density, we, we could look at the world's most popula populated, popular densi densities. Okay, population <laughs> densities are countries that are where? Um, what kind of countries are they? Japan. They're wealthy, developed nations. Some of the least populated areas actually are some of the poorest areas. 
So it isn't numbers of people. Okay, what is it? It's the distribution of the resources. It's distributing the resources. Here, this, this, these two sh uh, videos should show you, okay? The resources are not what? Distributed equal. But these countries, like we said, Japan, they're not really distributed equally in Japan either, but they have done what? Well, what makes Japan so wealthy? One word. If they didn't have this, they would die. Technology. Technology. No, it starts with the T. Hiroshima. Technology. Technology. I just said it. Transformers. Trade. Wait, please don't tell me it's actually Yeah, Sierra. Oh, Sierra. What is it? I'll trade you This allows them to what? Get the resources they need. But see, they have something to offer. Some of the countries has le have less to offer. So they have to develop their economies so then they could get access to resources. Or some of these countries have resources, but they again haven't developed those resources. So the assignment is to do the review. This is kind of a shorter review than we usually have because this is short. there's only two sections to this chapter, remember? And there were a couple terms we didn't go over, but I know you can figure them out. We have gone over them before, and the way you guys you don't even use your book to answer these, you usually go to Google. I think the pandemic should take out the internet. Then no, we really no, have no. 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 Somebody hit me. <laughs> I'm not going to get it to you, I'm not.